Hello some help viewers. Today we have a very interesting topic. Due to EASA regulations, the new traffic collision avoidance system, TCAS 7.1, has to be inducted into European aerospace. The dates are March 2012 for the new aircrafts and December 2015 for the used aircrafts. Okay, so let's go on with the questions. Good. Okay. Please, please go ahead. Yes. Uh, first of all, what is the current demand of TCAS 7.1 updates for the full flight simulators? Uh, well, the, the 7.1 update will be mandatory, so within a few years, every simulator in the world will need to be operating with TCAS 7.1. Um, and within Europe, uh, there are perhaps 150 simulators that will need to be updated. Okay. And uh, do you feel the demand right now? Well. Uh, we have developed a 7.1 implementation. Uh, we have bid um, uh, to customers with it, but we have not yet received any orders. Uh, but I'm expecting that later this year, the orders will start. Okay, due to the regulations, right? Yes, that's right. Um, it is mandatory, and um, uh, all aircraft must have it installed by December 2015, and many will have it installed this year and next. Could you name a few benefits of TCAS 7.1 versus the currently used version 7.0? Right. Well, it, it's not so much benefits, it's, um, it's making changes to the software uh, to avoid accidents. And there are really two areas where the software has been changed. Um, well, what normally happens is that if we have two aircraft that are flying together, that are going to collide, one is told to climb and the other is told to descend, like that. Yes. But there was an unfortunate accident over Switzerland about eight mm -hmm. years ago, mm -hmm. where one was told to climb and the other was told to descend, but it went the opposite way and they collided. And it went the opposite way because the crew followed the air traffic control Descent. instructions Descent. instead of their TCAS system. Traffic. So traffic. the modified software, now if it detects that situation happening, then the first plane will dive down, so it will go like that. And that is called a reversal, and that is the main reason of implementing TCAS 7.1. There's one other issue, that there is an adjust vertical speed call, which some pilots found ambiguous. And so that has been changed now, so instead of saying adjust vertical speed, it simply says level off and pilots will find that easier to understand. Now, the changes sound simple, but in fact they are quite significant. Uh, there are lots and lots of software modules that have had to be changed. Uh, but we've gone through that process and we're ready to go with a 7.1 implementation. What problems may arise while not paying attention to the European regulations for the training centers? Well, I, I think there are a number of issues that mm -hmm. if, if the training center was renting the simulators to airlines, then if they did not have TCAS 7.1 in two years' time, then I think that would be unattractive for prospective customers who would go elsewhere. And so I think for training centers, they should adopt this as soon as they can afford to do so. My suggestion would be to have a TCAS system in the simulator mm -hmm. that can be switched between TCAS 7.0 and 7.1. Okay. So depending on who is using it and whether their aircraft have been updated, mm -hmm. the simulator can be set one way mm -hmm. or the other. And the nicest way to do this is mm -hmm. just by pressing a button on the instructor station that will switch between one fit or the other. So that, that is what we do. Due to your long year experience, could you predict that there will come a bottleneck situation that might increase prices as well as cause some stress for the training centers? I think that it's human nature to delay yes. expenditure as long as possible. Um, and so it's, it's quite likely that um, there will be a surge as the deadline approaches. Um, hopefully some prudent um, users will um, adopt it sooner. If 120 simulators need to be updated in Europe, yes. then uh, there, there could well be a bottleneck um, in two years' time. Um, so 
Uh, hope, hopefully people will be wise and do it sooner rather than later. But with the previous transition from version 6.04 to version 7.0, um, it took many, many years for everybody to uh, be updated. Um, we did our last update for a customer two years ago. Uh, they went from a 6.04 system to a version 7. But it has been many years since the mandate to go to version 7. So I think that there will be people who manage to drag this out, but they will be fighting with the regulatory authorities um, after the uh, mandate has expired. If I was uh, the, the head captain, uh, the training captain, I, I would want my simulator to be updated as soon as possible so that my crews trained on the same equipment that was fitted in the aircraft. And uh, uh, once the mandate has passed, it will be difficult for simulator managers, I think, to handle the situation. It would be much better for them to meet the mandate um, in the simulator um, to match the, the mandate in the aircraft. How long has the Ostrich Software Limited been developing the TCAS updates? Well, we started in 1996 and it took um, three man years of programming effort to produce our first uh, TCAS system. Um, and then we have sold uh, about 40 systems uh, between then and now. Each one takes 12 weeks to install. Could you tell us more on uh, the problems and issues that happened during the TCAS updating process? Are there any ways to solve them? Well, Doing updates to older simulators is always challenging, um, that uh, we have to add software to an old computer, uh, we have to interface our new TCAS PC to the old computer, we have to create new pages for the instructor station that, c that can be difficult. Yes. So the problem areas are always the inter interfacing between our new equipment and perhaps a 20-year-old flight simulator. But we're, because as young men we all worked on those simulators, we understand them well and so we can accomplish the, the integration. Um, uh, every customer is happy. Um, I, I think we, we have a good track record in this area. Okay, right. <laughs> glad for that. But I wonder, it is the, uh, the same with uh, any upgrades of the old simulators? It, it, it is. Yes. It, it, it is not for the faint-hearted uh, when you take something that is 20 or 30 or Two of the simulators that we are working on this year are both 40 years old and you cannot rely on the documentation or the software listings. Um, many changes have occurred uh, over those periods. Um, but if you are experienced enough, then you can determine what you have and, and how to deal with it and to um, deliver to the customer something that works to their satisfaction. What is the downtime during the TCAS updating process? Well, um, we, we take care to minimise the amount of time that we spend installing the TCAS system so that customers can not lose any training revenue or training time in the simulator. And so our approach is to drive the TCAS instruments from a PC that is connected to the simulator's host computer. Okay. And that means we can do most of the testing in a computer room uh, with the parts laid out on a table and only when we are satisfied that everything is working is it then installed in the computer. So in fact there is never any loss of training revenue or training time. What we normally need is eight hours a night for about one week to do the final installation, the acceptance tests and uh, for the customer to sign off on, on what has been done. So our impact on the simulator is actually quite low. But because we have done so many systems, we, we now, uh, for us it is, like I, I call getting out the cookie cutter, just to make another one and to deliver it. The viewers might wonder, how many TCAS providers are there globally? How many of them are there? Right. Well, it, it's not many. E each of the major simulator companies, um, today CAE and what is known as L3, they will have their own implementation of TCAS and there are then there are a small number of independent companies that will do TCAS installations um, and they tend to be uh, at a much lower price than the two big companies but of course some airlines would prefer to deal with 
the original supplier of the simulator, especially when the simulator is quite new. Um, and in England, as far as I know, we are the only company that provides uh, TCAS systems. And finally, do you have any tips for the training centers that are planning to move to the TCAS 7.1 system? I would encourage them to uh, seek bids now to determine how much the update will cost, to get the budget approved for that update, and then perhaps later this year to issue orders, or an order, to have the update uh, taken care of. Uh, and I think the sooner they do it, the better, and that they should ask their suppliers to make the system switchable between uh, 7.0 and 7.1. It should involve no hardware changes, just a software change, but for an older TCAS installation, it may not be possible to update that because um, a 10-year-old system supplied by one of the large simulator companies may be using computer technology that is really today obsolete. For example, a, a Windows 98-based PC or a, a VME chassis-type system and so this is a good opportunity to perhaps retire old hardware and to have a new Linux-based PC fitted. And uh, Linux is free and uh, a new PC is very inexpensive. And then that will last for 10 or 15 years uh, from now. So that now would be a good time to um, review the hardware that the TCAS works on and to see if that really needs to be life extended or just simply replaced. So thank you for the conversation. Good, my pleasure.